There you are. What's up, Happy Fabricators? Welcome back to the shop. In this video, we're gonna be using the X-Tool P2 55 watt CO2 laser to build some build aluminum parts for the mini jet boat build. Now, X-Tool reached out to me a little while back and challenged me to see if there was a practical way to integrate a laser cutter into a metal fabrication shop. And I think I've got some ideas on how we can do that. Now we have most of the boat welded up here, but one of the obvious things here is this big gap right in the bow. It's gonna be a perfect place to stick a bow hook or a big old eyelet on the front so that we can have a place to tie it down or tow it. Hopefully we don't have to tow it. Um, or any other use to be able to just grab onto it and maneuver it if needed. The other thing that I've really wanted to integrate into this boat is a set of handles in the back. So I think it'd be really cool if somewhere in this vicinity we had some sort of cool and practical handle that we could grab onto to help maneuver this thing if we've got to pick it up out of the water or just have some eyelets in it to help tie this thing down to whatever we end up hauling it with. Okay, so the first step, at least for me when designing something like this is just getting my concept down on paper, even if it's just a rudimentary drawing, followed by some dimensions, and then I can get it into the computer. Once I have the concept roughed out, I can then start modeling it in the computer. Once we have those parameters set up, we can start working within these parameters and just kind of see what is gonna look the best and what's gonna function the best within the dimensions that we have to work with. Now, if you notice on both the bow hook that we're drawing and the rear handles, you'll notice there are some small holes that I am adding into this that you won't necessarily be able to stick a hook through, and these are gonna be important for the future steps of this project. So now that I've got my design solidified, we're going to be cutting them out on this eighth inch birch plywood with the laser cutter and using them as router templates. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is aluminum is very easy to cut with just your regular old woodworking router. So we are going to cut these out and use these as flush cut templates to be able to make some fancy billet aluminum parts. So first thing I'm going to do is load the material. Next thing we're gonna do is upload our Xtool software and import the new files that we just drew. The cool thing about this machine specifically is it has an internal camera and you can see the material that you have right on your computer screen to be able to align it with the material that's in the machine. The other cool thing that it does is instead of having to measure the thickness of your material manually, you can do an automatic calibration. The machine is going to run over, take a laser measurement, and automatically tell you the thickness of your material based off of that measurement. So now that we've got our part imported in, we can line it up here on a material and it is just barely going to fit. And we'll do our other one as well. Now that we've got them all nested, we can set our cutting values. Push the big button and let her rip. Okay, and there we go, straight off the table. Now, if you wanna see some more of this machine's capabilities and specifications on what it could do, I will go over that in the end of the video, but for now, let's keep building our boat parts. Okay, now I got a piece of half inch scrap aluminum here, and I'm just gonna wipe it down with some acetone real quick. And then we're gonna take and line up our router jigs onto the piece. Now, you don't have to do this, but I find Something that is helpful is to take a little bit of spray adhesive and I'm just going to spray one side of this, let it tack off and that will allow me to stick the part directly to the aluminum while I'm working on it and then I can peel it off later but it'll just kind of help it from floating around when I'm trying to get it locked down permanent like. So now that these have dried, 
clamp down. And then I size these holes for a pilot tap hole size for a quarter 20. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna drill out two of these holes and tap it so that we can actually fasten these templates down to the piece of aluminum with a actual fastener and make it more semi-permanent so that we're not counting solely on the glue to hold these in place. Now I said earlier that these holes were gonna be dual purpose and I meant that in meaning that what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to tap all of these out eventually once we get the main parts of these cut out and then they will just be universal mounting points on the boat for whatever, probably more than likely camera rigs so that we can get those sweet camera shots of this thing eventually ripping. Okay, so now that we got our holes big enough that we can drop down through our flush cut bit, uh, we're gonna set up our router table. Now, I don't have a router table, and I don't necessarily recommend this, but this is what I had to do to make do because I don't have a router table, but I ended up sandwiching my slide plate in between this half inch piece, and this thing's good and solid on here now. I'm pretty confident in that, but use a router table if all possible, and be safe, because routers are scary. Okay, so we got our pieces all routed out, at least our general shapes here, and I just wanna go over a couple things that I learned. And to be perfectly transparent, I haven't done it with this thick of aluminum. Now, it still works. There's just some other things to keep in mind. Because if it's thicker, I was finding that obviously it wants to grab a little harder, and so a couple things to combat that I was finding is some lubrication and anchor lube sent this stuff out to me and actually this is the first thing I've tried it on and it worked very well. It's a water-based lubricant and it's not really stinky. That's what I kind of liked about it, but it worked very well in aluminum. Um, and then the other thing was I originally cut these templates out of just three mil or eighth inch ply and that was not nearly enough for the bearing to ride on there well. So I ended up cutting a, another set and stacking on top. So I had a full quarter inch at least. I'd probably even recommend doing like a three eighths of an inch plus bearing surface. And because of that little bit of surface, uh, we ended up having the bearing slipped off and I got a little bit of a notcheroo going on right there. That's not as smooth as I would like it to be. So thankfully I know a guy that can weld this up and we will resurface it and continue on with our project. Okay, so after we got our corners all routed out, this is what we're left for. And I am pretty pleased with the results. Obviously that's the bottom, so it's gonna get welded to. I don't have care about as much, but this thing looks pretty snazzy. All rounded over, got some handles here on the back that can hang on to. 
got some strap down points. And then, like I said before, I left all these little holes with tapped quarter 20 so that if I need to mount some camera stuff or just anything to the boat, gives you a point to mount stuff. And then we've got our bow hook here and it turned out just as nice as well. As good as this is looking, I am almost tempted to like mirror polish these, but the rest of the boat's not gonna be mirror polished. So I will probably just leave them like this, but they're looking real good. So just for some better context here, this is where this is guy is going to go. So it'll recess back in this hole that we've got here. I'll clearance this out. Make that fit in there so it'll look something like that-ish. And then this guy will go right here. This will give us some tie down points, camera mounting points, and then just a nice clean handle if we need to grab a hold of or lift the boat from here. But before we get this guys welded on, in the spirit of using all the capabilities of our new laser cutter, we're gonna add some more pizzazz to these. And I think that's gonna be something to the effect of doing some custom engraving on one of these pieces. Now, one thing I have learned using this machine is it will engrave on stainless and mild steel and even titanium very well, but it will not engrave or etch aluminum at all really so one way to get around that is using a black laser spray now there's multiple different brands of this stuff but basically this stuff puts a coating on and then it makes a chemical burn on the aluminum and it works really well so let's get to it I think we're gonna call her the chaos canoe, folks. And then just in case somebody was wondering what thread pitch that hole was. And there you go, that's what a chemical laser engraving on aluminum looks like. Comes out pretty darn clean. Okay, so now that I got this thing all beautifully engraved, all I need to do now is trim out my slot in the bow here so that I can get a Fillet weld on the inside and the outside, make that good and strong. I'm gonna recess it in there quite a ways. And weld her up. So now that we got those made, for those of you who are interested in the specifications of this machine, first off, I wanna thank Xtool for sending this out and challenging me to integrate this into a fabrication shop. I do believe that there is a place for it. Now this is their industrial size machine and powered machine, and it does come with an industrial price. They do have other machines that are lower dollar that can do some similar things, maybe just not quite as fast. So down to this machine specifically, it came in a very well packaged box. There was lots of foam encapsulating it, and it pretty much came ready to run. All I had to do was pop this back cover off and I did have to put a plastic wedge in here because it felt like it was bound up. It took a little bit to pop that off. But then we just had to run some distilled water and some coolant that is specified in the manual and plug it in and it was ready to go. So very easy setup and it's very just user friendly. I'm not a very techie person and their software was very easy for me to use. All my photos and logos are literally just drag and drop and the software automatically translated it into the format that the machine needed to run. You just had to scale it on the software itself. Another thing is it is a standalone software. You don't have to be hooked to the cloud like other machines that I've seen and it is not user specific. So I can upload the program on the, my computer or my buddy could put it on his computer and he could run over, plug into my machine and push go and use it. It just has to refresh and recognize that the machine is hooked to the computer. And as long as you've got the software downloaded, that's all it needs, which is really cool in my opinion. The other cool thing about this machine is it has an integrated camera that you can see down onto your part while you're lining it up. So I can take my piece of material in here, throw it in here, any which away, and then I can go to my computer and look at it and arrange it on the computer screen 
in relation to the part. So it's much easier, unlike my CNC plasma table over here, I have to, I have the drawing and then I have to make sure that the machine is aligned up with where I zero it out and everything. This is much easier. You can literally just see it physically on your screen or your computer, move your design over the part through the camera view and know that you're going to be lined up pretty accurately. Another cool feature about this machine is it has a Z axis. So I believe the Z axis is good for either an inch and a half or two inches. And you can map out the contour of the piece and you can engrave on things that have a flowy contour, which is really cool. They also have add-ons that you can put in this machine for a rotary. So if you want to do tumblers or tubes. Now I was also able to do a tube just with the contour setting on this. I threw a titanium tube in here. I'll pop a photo or some video of that up right here and was able to engrave on that titanium exhaust tube. So that's another application that I'm probably going to be using this on is I have a company that I weld some exhaust stuff for. And then also whenever I do exhaust stuff, I can just engrave my logo or the company's logo and information right on the exhaust. And it's kind of cool. Also an add on that is pretty cool is they have risers so that you can take your slats out if you have a larger item and stick it underneath. So, you can do a larger item. And then there's also a conveyor pass through so that if you have something that is almost infinite in length, as long as you can support it and fits within the parameters of the bed width, it will feed it through and you can do a really long piece. And I might end up purchasing that part to use for some future projects. It was really nice to be able to cut these templates out that we use today router those pieces out. So I have a feeling that I'm gonna be using this for templates in the future as well. It's got a great ventilation system. You can hook a three inch hose to the back of that and direct that out of your building and it will just suck all those fumes out. I believe it's cutting capabilities. They claim that it will cut just larger than three quarter inch woods. I doubt that's the super dense woods. I cut up to three eighths and it cut beautifully. Um, and then also I believe up to three quarter inch acrylics as well. And I cut some of the acrylics that came with it. It comes with its own little starter package. I believe it's like three sixteenths and it cut through that like butter, but I believe it'll cut up to three quarter inch acrylic. So make sure to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion on laser cutters and how you think you would be able to use one in your shop. And you know the drill. If you want to see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are going to pop up here. If you want to be notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. It's free to do so. And go build something, guys. See you on the next one.